does uh, drinking alcohol affect your prana? <coughs> See, uh, if you're drinking alcohol, you know if you drink it, initially it makes you feel good. The goodness of alcohol is coming because it loosens you up a little bit. You are so uptight that you can't even sing in the bathroom. <laughs> Suddenly you have a few drinks, you can sing on the street and dance. <laughs> Isn't it? It loosens you up a little bit. So if you are so uptight, alcohol loosens you a little bit and that's great freedom. That's a lot of freedom in a person that he feels little more flexible within himself. He feels like he's free. It is, that is the attraction of alcohol. But this freedom lasts for some time and then you know you have the hangover. <laughs> so what the alcohol is doing to you is, it is dulling certain aspects of you which are constantly troublemakers for you, creating tension, agitation, nonsense, suspicion, this, that. When you get drunk, do you see people become overly loving and friendly and… <laughs> yes, generous. <laughs> do you see this? So it puts down your ugliness for some time. But if you put little more alcohol, you will become terribly ugly. Have you seen that also? <laughs> so, if you're interested in keeping yourself vibrantly alive, any intoxicant is not supportive. There's a beautiful story in, the, in Arabia. There was a devout religious Arab One day, the devil appeared in front of him and told him, say, it's time to die. He's still in the prime of his life. It's time to die for you. But if you want to earn back your life, I'll give you the option. Any one of these three acts, if you commit, I'll give you a new lease of life. One is, you must kill your devout servant, he has a very devout, faithful servant, you must kill him. Or you must beat up your wife, or you must drink wine. The devout Arab is not supposed to do any of these three things. Then he said, how can I kill my devout servant? He is so faithful to me, I cannot kill him. Such a thing is not possible. And how ridiculous, how can I abuse my wife? I cannot beat her. Okay, let me drink the wine. So he drank the wine. Once he drank the wine, he got inebriated and anyway he beat up his wife. <laughs> and the servant came to protect the wife and he killed him. If you are looking for life, See, when I say life, you are probably thinking of earning money, having a party twice a week and doing this and doing that. That's not life. That's an arrangement that you made. All these arrangements in your life you made because you thought if you have all these arrangements you can live joyfully, isn't it? Isn't it so? Yes? Why all these arrangements? Why all this husband, wife, children, friends, family, club, golf, this, that, everything? Because you believe that if I have all this, I can live well. Living well means I can experience my life well. Now, to experience your life well, you try to make all these arrangements. Most of the time you're getting so entangled in these arrangements, except for these arrangements, nothing else is happening. Isn't it? Yes. Now you think your wife or your husband is the source of all misery in the world. Now you think your children are the basis of your problems. 
Isn't it so? Or your job is taking your life. Please see, what is taking your life is not your enemies. If your enemies or some devil is coming and taking your life, that's okay. What is taking your life is things that you always wanted. Your career, your business, your wife, your children, your husband, these are the people who are taking your life, isn't it? Isn't it so? No, this is not fair. If some devil is coming and taking your life, some enemy is taking your life, it's okay. Things that you so much wanted in your life, things that you worked so hard to create, they are taking your life away, please see. Fundamentally you are looking for well-being. Should you not address it directly? Hmm? If you address your well-being directly, then if family is there, with them we will be well. If they are not there, without them we will be well. That's how it should be, isn't it? If there is somebody around us, with them we will be well, we will share our well-being with them. If nobody is there, we are still well. Now you don't know how to be well, but you have made all the arrangements. See what a mess it's become. So, including the party and alcohol came only for this, because you thought all this will bring you well-being, isn't it? Now, if you organize your life energies in such a way that you will be anyway well, I can have you intoxicated on life in such a deep way, three days you will be wobbly on your feet. <laughs> really. You will come and see in the ashram, people who are into different states of meditation, they are like drunk. They are like this. <laughs> People, <laughs> there have been, there was a time when people thought something is happening in this ashram. What is happening? There are no gates to the ashram, anybody can come. But they don't come. They go sit on the mountains with binoculars, they're watching. <laughs> That's happening. And people are in different states of ecstasy, they're going crazy by themselves. Oh, they're all taking some kind of drug, some secret drug, huh? Not at all, such a thing will never happen. Such a thing will never happen. I am always totally drunk. If you look into my eyes, you will see I am all the time absolutely drunk. <laughs> but am I balanced enough to handle the reality? So you can be like this, all the time pissed drunk. but totally balanced. <laughs> if you want to let go, you can let go. If you don't want… So if you're inebriated like this all the time with life, instead of wine, I'm talking about why don't you get inebriated with D-wine? <laughs> Once you touch it, you know in yoga we are talking about five layers of the body. The fifth layer, the final layer of the body is bliss body. If you just touch it, if you align these three bodies properly, the fourth one is not in your hands. If these three, physical body, mental body and energy body, if you align them properly, then the bliss body will find expression. Right now it's… these three are disaligned. So, it does not find expression. If you align them properly, once the bliss body finds expression, you will see you are just blissful by your own nature. If you… you know those of you who come to the Bhava Spandana, you will see people get so madly drunk. Without any drink, without any chemical, without any input, just you touch them in a certain way, they will become so inebriated. Blissful means dripping with it. Many of them can't stand on their legs, they will be like that. Three days they'll be absolutely drunk. So, whatever the pleasure that is coming when you get drunk on alcohol is not coming because of the alcohol. Because it loosened up certain things, it is coming from within you. All experience is coming from within you, isn't it? Now I am talking about 
bringing that forth consciously without using any chemical, no hangovers, doesn't cost anything. Wherever you are, you can always be drunk. Interested, the drunkards? <laughs> For more on Sadhguru, visit www.ishafoundation.org.